Our first insider says he hears this a lot. If I get help, what am I admitting to? We're talking about the stigma of mental health. Let's find out more. When we talk about mental health concerns, uh, we talk about not just the stigma of society, but sometimes the individual's personal stigma, what their thoughts are about right. it. And so- It's almost a sense of, they feel like a sense of embarrassment or guilt, yeah. or there's something's wrong, and there isn't. Yeah. It's, it's a matter of, if I get help, what am I admitting to? Right. If I get help, what will my friends and family think of me now? And, and one of the worst ones, I think, and, and hopefully we're moving past that, mm -hmm. is if I get help, they'll think I'm crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the stigma. And that's the stigma. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, I want to remind our viewers that you can call in and ask a question or share a story by dialing 855-796-4475. We'd love mm. to hear from you. Now, it can be challenging to diagnose mental disorders in children and teens, and there's research being done that focuses on the relationship between behavioral and emotional changes and the brain. So let's find out more from the National Institute of Mental Health. One particularly important lesson that we've learned is that problems that manifest chronically all throughout an individual's life often start in childhood. And this means that identifying mental health problems is important not only for what it tells us about children, but also for what it tells us about adolescents and adults. Some children with mental health problems do fine, others have chronic problems. And it looks like by understanding how the brain is functioning, we might get clues and insights into some of those differences. And one of the things that we've learned, particularly for fears and anxiety, that problems that children are having manifest incredibly rapidly on the order of milliseconds. So we're developing novel video games that are both fun and engaging, but also helpful in that we think that they're beginning to change the way children think when they're processing dangerous stimuli. So they're saying that problems with children can increase or grow rapidly, and they're mm -hmm. using the, the term milliseconds. Is that mm -hmm. true? Well, look at it in terms of, as an observer, it'll feel like milliseconds. Right. Um, but oftentimes, if you look at the history of it or what's going on with that child, you, don't, you can't see what's going on behind their eyes, the thoughts in their head. So there may have been a thought process there. There may have been feelings, emotions that are mm -hmm. coming up that weren't even necessarily demonstrated through their behaviors. And uh, what will happen is there might be a crisis moment where as an observer, it's like, wow, what happened to this child in front of me? They're just a completely different person right. or responding differently. So it can feel like milliseconds, yes. Like wow. yeah. So when it comes to mental health disorders mm -hmm. among adolescents, the age group getting hit the hardest is between 17 and 18 years mm -hmm. of age. Why are the numbers so high? Is it, is it a transition period in... in Normally, when you look at any transition period, right. there's any time of change usually is a time where somebody is going to be more vulnerable. Okay. And that tends to be, in our life cycle, one of the most vulnerable time changes, you know, um, going from high school to college, mm -hmm. um, a, lot, a great deal of life decisions, expectations, frustrations, Pressure, anxiety. right, absolutely. Yeah, pressure. Are you seeing that here a lot in South Florida? You see it everywhere. Right. You know. Um, Do you see are... that maybe with the increase of social media use as well? Yes. This, these numbers just keep getting higher. Yes. Yes. I, uh, I look at it in terms of when I grew up, um, if I was, say, having problems at school, right. I would go home and I'd have my space. Unless there was something going on at home, I would have my space. Right. There is no space anymore, you know. Um, and especially for somebody, if they're depressed or they feel vulnerable, you know, going even just on a platform where you have a social media feed, and it's not even like you're looking for anything negative, but you literally can just see all these negative. And you're scrolling and scrolling, and you. Just... And it can make that feeling of hopelessness even hopelessness even feel more. Yes. And if you know. you're so vulnerable as a mm -hmm. 17 or 18 year old as well, I can imagine that's more impacting. Yes. As well. Okay, so let's go over another statistics from the Centers mm -hmm. for Disease Control and Prevention, suicide. And suicide is the second leading cause of death between ages 10 and 34. Mm -hmm. And more and more we're seeing it as well on the news. Mm -hmm. We, and it's devastating, it's yeah. devastating. So, and fourth, I'm sorry, in ages 35 to 54. But let's focus on that number. Let's start with, with 10 to 34. Why mm -hmm. are we seeing that? 
When I started as a volunteer in 93, it used to be the third leading cause of death among adolescents. Wow. It was actually in about 2011 or 2010 where it moved up to the second leading cause of death. Um, there is a contagion factor around suicide. Um, the contagion factor, how it works is if somebody's having thoughts of suicide and they're exposed to somebody else's suicide, then that increases their risk. Right. Um, and that goes back to social media, that exposure that not just, you know, hearing about it, but reading about seeing it, it, seeing it consistently, seeing it portrayed in movies right. and shows can have an impact on those who are already thinking about it. I mean, there was th that call mm -hmm. controversy with 13 Reasons Why in that mm -hmm. show that said the show itself is, was to blame for certain suicides as well, or... or... So, that, that's a complex, it's a, you can't make that kind of statement. Right. However, however, if I was an adolescent and I was having thoughts of suicide, and I watched that show, and for whatever reason I related to that character, then that could have a profound effect right. on me. But if I was an adolescent and I was having thoughts of suicide and I watched that show and I didn't have any feelings about that or character, connection. Yes. it wouldn't necessarily have that impact. So it's possible. That is possible. But. And we're also seeing it in the ages 35 to 54. Mm -hmm. So at that point, what, is, what, what are you saying is the cause? Um, it can be everything from finances. It could be everything from situations that come up in our lives, mental health concerns. When they look at it, um, of those who died by suicide, um, one of the studies that had been done came back with 90% of people who died by suicide mm -hmm. had an underlying mental health concern right. or substance use disorder. Um, so think of those things as two things that cloud the mind enough right. that somebody might be able to overcome their instinct for survival. Because in the end, that's what suicide is about. Right. Suicide isn't, isn't just about ending pain, because that's what we hear sometimes, oh, it's about ending pain. It's literally being at a point where you can actually overcome your fear of death. Wow. Now, you, you mentioned something, and I want to touch mm -hmm. on that. You said this person has an underlying mental illness issue. So mm -hmm. that how would you know if someone has a serious mental illness issue as opposed to any other mental illness? Well, so when you use the word, like when I think of mental illness, I think of every mental illness um, has a spectrum. Um, from depression, schizophrenia. I know people who are schizophrenia that if you were to sit with them, talk with them, work with them, you would have no idea. Right. Um, and then there's cases, you know, you have somebody with depression who may be on the severe spectrum of the case and they're not functioning. And so when you think of serious mental illness, what I think of in terms of what we talk about in mental health first aid right. is impact. And the impact is the ability to work, carry out daily activities, and engage in satisfying relationships. And to understand more about mental health, go to our website, allhealthtv.com, where we have lots of helpful clips to watch. If you have a question, you know you can call us, 855-796-4475.